Okay, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Um, today is Sunday and um, I was reading some beautiful stories, uh, of course, in of history and stuff like that um, over Shabbos and I came across a story that I never saw before. Um, it's just really cool. It's in the third chalik of the new Siach Sarfi Kodesh in a section that is titled um, Speeches and Stories About Rabbi Nachman's Lessons, you know, about all the different lessons that he gave over, like the backgrounds of them and stuff like that. So this is just one story over here, which is pretty crazy. Um, and let's just read it. So it says over here like this. I'm going to read from the Sefer. It says that Rabbi, it says that Rabbi Levi Yitzhak, this is talking about Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bender, um, he saw in Uman, when he was living in Uman before he moved to Israel, before he moved to Eretz Israel, he saw it in Uman a book that was written in the writing, in the, it was handwritten by Rabbi Shmuel Isaac, who was a student of Rabbi Nachman. Okay, Rabbi Shmuel Isaac was a big student of Rabbi Nachman, um, and he saw a book that was written in it by Rabbi Shmuel Isaac in his own handwriting. Five uh, visions and things that he saw in the upper worlds. Okay, so there's two footnotes here. Number one, about the book, uh, the handwritten book, it says that Rabbi Hirsch Leib Lippel, who also was, was a student of Rabbi Nachman or a student of Rabbi Shmuel Isaac or somebody else, he also saw this and it was from, and it was written on green paper with very, very thick lettering. Okay, he saw this in the upstairs part of the cloys of the old shul in Uman. He saw many writings of Rabbi Shmuel Isaac and all of them were Myrus of All of them were visions and like, I guess it's the same word Myrus and Chazionis, but whatever. Stuff that he saw like in the spiritual world. Okay, so Rabbi Levi Yitzhak saw this thing and in it was written one of the visions that he saw. The other four visions are lost from us. Rabbi Yitzhak says, it says over here in a footnote, this, but this, but this vision is known to us. Okay, and this vision is related to the lesson you should say to the Kohan and you should say to the priests in the Kut Emran in the second lesson, number two. Okay? Um, and he saw this vision a few years after he became close to Rabbi Nachman, and this is the vision. Okay? So it says, now we're going to start learning about the vision. That was just a background. Now we're going to learn about this vision that he saw. Rabbi Shmuel Isaac was outside, and he saw that there was a great, it says, the which is basically a crazy blizzard winter storm. Everything was full of snow, and he wasn't able to go anywhere. So he was outside, and he was in the middle of a storm. Um, and he fell down to the ground uh, because of the greatness of the storm and the wind. And he didn't know where to go. Meanwhile, he saw, um, in the distance, he saw a light. And he went towards the light, of course, because if you're in a storm, you're probably going to go towards the light. And he saw that there was a great palace there, a very, very beautiful palace with many, many rooms. And he went inside, and he went from room to room. From, and he went from room to room until he came to a room where it was written on the door that this is the chamber of the Messiah. This is the chamber of the Mashiach. Okay? And he went inside to this room, and he saw the Mashiach standing there. The Messiah was standing there, and he was He was putting on a belt, or he was fastening onto himself different layers of weapons. It says that that's 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 the lashon he used it, um, and uh, and the Mashiach said. I guess to himself or to Rabbi Shmuel Isaac, he said, with these weapons, I'm going to capture the whole entire world. And it says here that it's impossible to even describe the beauty and the grace that was happening at the time that the Mashiach was putting these weapons onto himself, whatever this means in deeper things. And Rabbi Shmuel Isaac stood there and he was looking, mikolze. And he was sitting there and he was like looking and he's like, what is going on? Why is Mashiach putting on all these weapons? What is happening over here? And he didn't understand what he said. 
until the Mashiach turned to him, until the Messiah turned to him and said in Yiddish, or whatever, this is how they say it in Yiddish, but he said to him, he said, go to your Rebbe, go to your Rabbi, and then you'll understand the, the explanation of what you're seeing over here. And then the vision stopped, and Rav Shmuel Isaac went to Rabbi Nachman, he went to Rabbi Nuzal, and when he came in front of him, he saw, uh, he, when he walked into the room, Rabbi Nachman was in the middle of giving this second lesson of Lakute Moran, you should say to the Kohanim, Emor El HaKohanim. Um, and the beginning of that lesson um, starts off that, Iker Klezeno Yishal Mashiach Hu um, uh, What's it called? And uh, it says that basically what that means is that the, that the main weapon of the Messiah, when the Messiah comes to the world, it's going to be prayer. It says over here in a footnote that Rabbi Nachman said, and in that lesson also, Rabbi Nachman says that when when the Mashiach when the Mashiach comes, and he has to be the Mashiach, so he has to take over the world. And talk about his Mashiach, he's not going to even fire one bullet. He's not going to fire any weapons at all. It's not real weapons. He's talking about he's talking about uh, he's talking about like the prayer. And what does this mean over here? And then Rabbi Shmuel Isaac understood the explanation of what he saw in this vision. So in this footnote over here in Yud, in the footnote it says. From this vision and from this story, we learn the great importance of every single tefillah, of every single prayer, of every single person. That when you pray, you are making a weapon for the Messiah. And the more that a person increases his prayer, so then you give the Mashiach, Yosef Yosef, clay zayin. <clears throat> that the Mashiach is going to, that you now, the more that you pray, you give more power to, to the Mashiach to come, to be able to take over, to be able to show the world that he's the Messiah. And in this way, a person gains like a double worth by doing this, like because by praying, you already, you're giving the Mashiach more power. And the second is that you're, that you're also doing more prayer, which is always good. Um, yeah, so that's what he said. So that's so so that so that's the vision, man. I don't know. I when I read that, I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy." It's just very, you know. You walk into a room and you see the Mashiach fastening himself with belts and belts of weapons. Really, he was fastening himself with the tefillahs of the people praying, with the prayers of the people praying, and with this way, he's going to bring the Mashiach to the world. So let's hope that Mashiach will come with Hashem's help. That's the end. That's the video. Short video today.